I'm Michael Kirby, and in 2007, just before I lost all my power in the High Court of Australia, I made a brilliant uh, and very artistic presentation at uh, the Entertainment Centre in Melbourne with Elf Transporter. On that glorious occasion, I wore this beautiful jacket and it went viral on what passed for the social media at the time. Now, of course, it would have struck into the hearts of artists, fellow artists all over the world, and they would have been thrilled to see me. I pensioned this off, but I brought it out of mothballs tonight so that it can be there with you on this celebration because I can't be there, so this is to brighten up your, your night. Uh, I was there at the very beginning of arts law in Australia. I was there at the beginning with Shane Simpson. Now Shane was a person who was almost as eccentric as I was. He found a place just near the dental hospital, which is where uh, the arts law centre was set up. And I remember wandering around there, avoiding all the dentists I could avoid, uh, to look at the premises in which this wonderful idea was to be kicked off. And it can be really divided into decades. Um, immediately after it was set up in the dental hospital, of course, we had to, as arts lawyers, get into a corporate phase. And so we became very corporate and we set up uh, an independent corporation and I became the president. Uh, this was a very important moment for the Arts Law Centre and for me. And since then, there have been seven further presidents and I honour them all and I especially honour Margaret Beasley, who is now the president. She is also my successor as president of the Court of Appeal of New South Wales, the first woman president of that organisation. The first decade was really uh, a little down market. Uh, things were done by telephone. It was all done on the cheap. But we were only starting up. Keep that in mind. And then by the second decade, uh, the Arts Law Centre was getting into more serious stuff. Um, lawyers were being uh, recruited. Lawyers were giving pro bono advice uh, and uh, were opening up advice nights which were extremely popular and spread very quickly around uh, our continental country. <clears throat> and then the big end of town firms got involved in the third decade. Uh, and uh, subsequently, uh, the centre reached out to Aboriginal Australia. And a very important part, I think it's about a third of the work of the Arts Law Centre now, maybe a quarter, is devoted to Aboriginal Australian artists. And at long last, the law, which turned its back on Aboriginals, is reaching out and lawyers are reaching out and giving assistance to this most important spiritual and artistic dimension of our country. <coughs> And so we come to the fourth decade, and that's really the interesting question. What is the Arts Law Centre going to be doing in the fourth decade? I think advocacy is going to be a very important issue for the centre. But one of the problems is a new legal restriction which has been imposed on those who receive federal gold uh, to not get involved in politicking. Uh, the purpose of this, naturally enough, is to stop uh, those who might be adversarial towards the governing parties uh, from uh, turning into political arms of the opposition party. And one can understand that point of view. But it is important, as I learned in my decade in the Law Reform Commission, to extrapolate. Extrapolate from one's experience in the law. Extrapolate from the individual instances to the areas where law reform is needed. And I think this is the challenge for the fourth and fifth decades of the Arts Law Centre in Australia, to learn from individual cases and to assist governments and assist parliaments 
in drawing attention to the needs for law reform. And if this means that some of the lobbying has to be outsourced to others to do it so that no threat is made to the funding of the Arts Law Centre, then so be it. But meantime, I offer congratulations, I offer best wishes, I hope it's a wonderful party, I wish I were there with you. If I were, I would reprise my magnificent performance of 2007, but that will have to wait for the 50th anniversary and I hereby undertake that the curtain will go up, that I will be there and it will be an even greater evening and my performance will be unforgettable.